for coming here. Um, Tony and I are going to do this, and it's a real low key. What I want is a discussion. Uh, we'll talk back and forth. This is mainly for you to ask us questions about the type of mistakes that we've made, the things that we've discovered. I'm recording um, two cameras here. I've recorded the morning session. I'm not going to give you a handout. What I'll do is I'll email you the YouTube video after it's been edited. So don't need to take notes. Pay attention. Ask good questions and enjoy yourself. Um, this all started out, first question up there, why make a video? I've noticed, and I'm not, I'm not making fun of the ABC schedule or saying anything bad about it, but there was a reduction in time. <laughs> and as a reduction in time, for, especially for my class, I lost 60 days of instructional time. And so I needed to do something where I could present the material in such a way that the students still get the material even if they're not in my classroom. And what I did this summer was I implemented some summer work and I actually had them do almost 30 days of material by creating videos. I didn't use this technology, I actually used community clips. However, this is accessible for everybody, regardless if you're in the ALC or if you're in the high school. This is a great, cheap way of presenting material and having students access it. My actually very first video that I experimented with this summer was from my cell phone. Um, the video wasn't too bad. I actually have an example. Pull that up. It, and I even made a comment on the video. I get seasick. I get seasick real easily. And trying to hold it, it was a little bit wobbly. But you don't have to have high-end technology to make this work. It'll work with most of the things that you already have. Hello, this is Mr. Craig, and I want to demonstrate a solubility reaction here. So we're going to take uh, mix two different solutions together, and then we'll mix the other right, two together. Based on our solubility rules, I hope that you said that the lead iodide forms the precipitate. So let's take a look at these two, mixing them together. So again, I have the lead nitrate in this beaker. I have the potassium iodide in the other beaker. So looking at this reaction, very, very impressive change. Obviously, the color changed. They were both clear before, and then once we mix the two together, we have this very, very cloudy substance. Tony, go ahead and talk about why you started doing it. Uh, well, predominantly, it's the same reason. I mean, you know, as a teacher, sometimes, even if, no matter what schedule you're on, you always supposedly we're, we're hesitant sometimes to be gone because we know that uh, that day could be valuable, and especially in a, a compressed schedule such as the ABC schedule. So um, by preparing you know, a video, whether it's uh, your discussion, your lecture, a homework problem discussion, you've got yourself covered. Um, it's also great for the students, you know, that said, who are going to be absent, they've got a great way that they can you know, find themselves in a position to catch up, or even if they are present and they just need that extra exposure. And, um, you know, as we get into our deeper discussion here in the, in the avenues and why why YouTube, why we use YouTube. It's just such a nice medium because um, a student can access that video from just about any device. They can use uh, their smartphone, they can use an iPad, they can use any other kind of tablet, they can sit on a couch, you know, they can, you know, virtually anywhere they can access our content. And the one reason why, again, why I started making videos is so that I plan on, and again, doesn't mean that any of you have to do this. I plan on flipping the classroom next year. What that means is everybody's going to watch the lectures at home and so that when we come into the classroom, we can focus on questions about the lecture. We can do more labs. We can evaluate more often. We can make the time more valuable while we're in the classroom since we have a reduced amount of time. So this year what I'm doing is I'm making the lecture videos. I'll have that set in place, and then next year they're responsible. Their homework is to go home and watch the lecture, take any notes, come in and ask questions about that. Also, I've even had kids come up to me and say, you know, I've seen you lecture. I'd rather watch you at home because I can always pause you. <laughs> get up, <laughs> go to the bathroom, go get something to eat, text somebody, okay? Or you could even, they can even text their friend and say, hey, Tony, what's he talking about here at, at minute 427? Okay. So it's nice. I, I mean, literally, I've had kids say, I'd rather watch the video than sit in class and listen to you.
And if I say something, and that's not bad. I actually like that. Because if I say something, they might go, what did he say? Back it up. Listen again. So it's really nice that you don't have to repeat the same thing four times. However, when I'm lecturing during the class, I might have the kid ask two or three questions that are the same thing from different students. Guess what I get to do to that? Edit it out. Okay, so that even though I may be presenting for 40 minutes, it might only be a 20 minute video and we can get the crap out, so to speak, and have just the good content. Um, what's needed to make a video? We already talked about it. Uh, I know Robin, Robin, I thought I saw Robin walk in there. Cameras, we have some cameras in the media center. I don't know how many. If you need to, these are, how many? 39. Oh, okay, so we've got the technology. Um, this is actually HD quality. I don't know how particular you are to your video quality, but this is nice. I got this Kodak camera, and Tony has one as well. Uh, <laughs> I actually brought one in, showed him a video, and he's like, ooh, that's nice, because it has HD quality. I don't know if you care about HD quality. Flip doesn't have HD. It does? Yeah, does? Okay, never mind. Do, but I can't remember if ones I have to do or not. Yeah, I think they do. Okay. So, depending on the quality, and some of you might not care about the quality, and that's fine. Again, it's all about the content. So, what you need to get started, if you don't want to go invest on a camera, you might use your cell phone. But again, whatever technology is available. Um, I got started because I found that there was a need. I needed to do this. I needed to have more time in the classroom to present the material. I'm under the gun. We've got to get a lot of material in in a short amount of time. And this really helps. Go ahead, Tony. What do you got? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you look at if, if you are trying, you know, if, if you have to incur the cost. I know that's tough. I mean, the, the camera that, that, that we purchased, these are under $100. And that's four one. gig. Yeah. Reason number one why we bought these. <laughs> we wanted something cheap that had very good quality. I was extremely impressed when I saw uh, what he was able to do with them. And, and as far as the HD. The HD can be important, especially if you're filming situations where you have a document up on the screen with text, or if you are going to handwrite uh, through, a, through a digital projector like an Elmo or Samsung's. Um, I've noticed that on some of the other equipment that I've used that weren't so high HD, that it was a little tough to read. You know, by the time you blow that screen up you know, on the YouTube video, uh, you lose a little bit of quality. And I agree, because I do a lot of things on the marker board, and I'll show some more examples here in a minute. And, I mean, as well as you can read that marker board, that's what it looks like on YouTube. It's that clear. It's nice with this it's type of camera. It's that clear. It's nice with this type of camera. Um, we can record a lot of things. What I don't do is record students. I'll record their voice, but I won't record their face. Okay? That's one rule you got to remember. Don't ever record the face. And I actually have a YouTube video up where I had a help session, and... It wasn't until near the end that a student said, hey, it'd be nice if we had a recording of this. I'm like, oh my God, I've had this technology sitting in my drawer over there. And we finally worked out our problem and I had her walk me through the problem. And I recorded that and then a couple other kids got to look at it before the test. So how do we start this? Um, you start with what you know. So you take pounds. So we're going to start pounds. with this, right? Yeah. Okay. All that out. Okay. And just leave it as pounds? Over yard or over yards. Cute. Sort of cute. Okay. Alright. And do you want to start with pounds going to milligrams or yards cubed going to millimeters cubed? Start with pounds to milligrams. That's a good call. Alright. So we'll go pounds. Um, you can also use this to set up labs. You can also use it to set up activities. And again, I know we have a large spectrum of different um, subjects in here, but I'm speaking from a science base. I need to set up a lab. This would be great. We can show them how to put the things together, what expectations are there. They watch that at home when they come in. We go. We're not going to sit around and talk about how to set things up. Uh, I know we've got industrial tech in here. We could talk about safety procedures, things like that. But again, you know, you're thinking right now what you can do at home for those kids and that you don't want to waste time in class doing that. Um, saving the recording. Every recording that I make, I save if it has some good content, and the way I save that is on an external hard drive. I went to Sam's and bought that. 
uh, for like 80 bucks. You've got 750 gig, you can buy a one terabyte um, hard drive, but save the video. Even though I post it on YouTube, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stay on YouTube. All right. So if something happens or I need to make changes to the video, I've already got it there. I can edit that video. I've already gone through one video and edited it three times. So I actually made it, got the raw footage, edited that, and then posted it on YouTube, pulled it off YouTube, edited that, posted it, and then put it on again. The U drive is not a great place to save. It'll fill up very quickly. <laughs> very quickly. And I do. I have my personal laptop over there. I don't use the school stuff, okay? So because we're very limited on your space and these things gobble up a lot of space. So if you have the accessibility to an external hard drive, that's really nice. Um, one thing that we also found is after we shoot the footage, I go and put it in Movie Maker. Does anybody ever use Movie Maker? It's very, very simple. It is on our computer here. Uh, the bad news is this video here, I know the flip goes right to Movie Maker. There's no converting that needs to take place. No, they need to convert. Oh, man. Do, we, do you have a program that does it? Zamzar is online, Z-A-M-Z-A-R.com. It does okay. a audio or video conversion. Zamzar. 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 Oh, Zamzar. Uh -huh. Okay. I want to say that so that I get that for the video. Zamzar.com. Okay. And it, you just put the file, you search to it, and then it sends you an email and says your file is ready to download, then you download it in whatever converted file you need. Perfect. In. There you go. With no watermark and no limited use. Correct. And yes. the quality stays intact? Yes. Good. Well, depending mm -hmm. upon what you're converting it to. I mean, if you convert it to a WMV, then it, it's not as okay. clear. Okay. But WMV is what you need for Movie Maker. Right. So. What is the clear one? Well, can Movie Maker do AVI? Yes. AVI is a better quality. Yeah. Right. It's okay. just going to chew up more space, mm -hmm. which we're going to talk about mm -hmm. how you've got limitations, uh, much more strict ones on Fusion. Now, if you're Mac, these are good to go. These are quick yes. time. So these are nice videos just looking at um, the quality. If you just if you want to take what you shoot and put it on YouTube, it's good to go. Okay, so, but I like to edit the video. I want to take out the silly questions that the kids are asking. Because, again, some kid might ask the same question not be paying attention, and we want to get that out. Also, when I go and erase the board, because I'll fill up the board, they don't need to see me erasing the board and watching how I sway and move as I erase. <laughs> so there's things that you can do to edit, and there's nice transitions. So it doesn't have to be as I'm erase or finishing one problem, I quickly go to another. There's fade features, and it looks nice. And I've got right now, I've got 112 videos on YouTube right now that are mainly for chemistry. So there's a lot of examples you can look at. Editing and recording, do that through Movie Maker. There's Movie Maker here. Tony uses Movie Maker. I've got Movie Maker, an earlier or a later version um, that I use, but it, they're pretty much the same thing. Um, and we'll show that here in a minute. Posting the finished product. I post mine on YouTube because Fusion only has a limitation of 50 meg. On YouTube, 2 gig. And at first, if you start a YouTube account, they're going to only allow you 15 minutes of video, 10 to 15, don't remember which that is. But after your 10th posting and you have approved material, sky's the limit. So I've got a video on there that's 57 minutes, but you have to make yourself worthy before you can get that time. So you have to post at least 10 videos. Is what I found in Tony on your 11th. You got the permission? Right. Okay. Fusion, don't know how long it's here, and it's very limited. So uh, if you keep your files under 50 meg, you can post it on, uh, you, or on Fusion, but I found out that 50 meg is about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. I have a question. Um, Absolutely. When you post them on the YouTube, how do the kids know, you know, show where that. to go? You can. They actually need? You can. On Fusion, you can have a link to it. On mine, I have an outside website that I have my whole calendar of all the things that I do. It's part of, okay, this is what we're going to talk about today. There's a link, and it goes right to it. So basically the easiest way then for us right now is to set a link for Fusion so they can click through. Absolutely. <laughs> Until you have other technologies available for you. Here's an example of where I have my videos linked to my schedule. 
And again, this is my own personal web page that I have here. You guys have Fusion, but let me get to the schedule here. Uh, for the currently, what I was working on, I have my lectures linked to my actual schedule. So here's the material that's being taught. Here's the example problems that are given to the students in class. And so I have everything up in PDF file, and it might be taking a little longer here for the um, all the stuff that's going on with the computer. So I have my lecture notes here, and then my links to the lecture are here. So all my lectures, and you can see where I have the lectures linked, and it's about to go to YouTube. But the student, so it's a direct link for them, and there's my username up here. I have no idea what this information is on the side. Okay, so, and again, student can pause it at any point, move ahead if they're, they don't need to watch that part, but maybe they just want to see something else. So, all the videos are linked from my own personal web page. And again, this is not Fusion, but it's a little cleaner for me. So what I have on my calendar is the material that we're going to need to talk about. So there's where we're looking at. So here's the deal. So if you're in my class and you miss that Friday, you already have the expectation that you're to go home or whip you're at home or wherever you're at. Say if you go to a leadership conference, you're responsible for the material for that day. I don't want you coming in the next day and saying, what did we do yesterday? If you say that, I'm really going to give you a dirty look, and they know that's coming. So they're to go and either print this off or look at it. This is the material that I'm talking about. And then click on the lecture video and watch it. Now you can blow that up. Now the reason why I have what I have on here, and again, this is from Movie Maker. Oh, come on. Okay, so I have, that's just a real, real basic entry. Okay, so, and then underneath where it says questions are at, that's what I'm talking from, the same thing that they got. So if somebody's looking at YouTube and they want to find, what's he talking from? That's where it's from, and then we go. Okay, so that's the whole lecture. I'm not, again, I've got it muted here. But what I've got are different things, fades, all kinds of things. So stuff that you want to present, and it's got the, all the transitions. This has been edited. It's nice and clean, and this video isn't very long, but the quality is really nice. Right on the board. Probably a bad example here. This is what's so important because there's a lot of videos out there. I can't read them. You know, especially if I'm looking at a small mobile device. But even sometimes when I'm sitting on a computer, uh, pretty well renowned, you know, video entities are putting these things out that I, I have to let like, spend. Maybe I'm just getting old. <laughs> that's that's why I think the quality is so important, especially if you're dealing with text. And even with if you do PowerPoint presentations, at least with this camera, you can see, I mean, you can see pretty well the periodic table, you can see the, the symbols, it's not bad. And when I recorded this video, it was about the same lighting as right now, I actually pulled the blinds shut, so it's dark in here. So if you want to have a PowerPoint presentation going on, it will capture that, and it will get everything there. You can also, I'm not sure if this is the same video, yeah, so I had, on this video, I actually inserted, we were talking about Thompson's model of the atom, I don't want to get into it, but how they discovered electrons was by accident, and so I got a cathode ray tube inserted into the video. The kids didn't see this. I had to do that during my prep because the cathode ray tube was on the other side of the building. And in the video I was saying, I was asking the kids, did anybody have Mr. Belcher? Because I knew he had that cathode ray tube and the Tesla coil, and so I was like, never mind, I'm going to put it in the video. Watch it when you go home tonight. So I actually did a demo, put it in, and then came back. So you can insert video, you can insert audio, you can insert anything in that thing as long as you're using an editing program. So you don't have to sit here and think, okay, I need to start the video. And if you make mistakes, and I'll have a video online where it's like, I'm just blah, 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 blah. Get it out, okay? Get right to the point where you start talking and it's important. Yeah, Andy. Um. I noticed that on some videos it's not necessarily the video quality, but sometimes the audio quality that's distracting. Have you, do you have any tips on that? In, you mean being able to hear it? Just, I, yeah, I don't know if it's going to I'm sorry, most of these alpha particles would just 
Does that sound bad? Oh, that sounds good. These cameras yeah. are bad. The microphone, yeah. I think, is, is, is pretty high tech. Mm -hmm. Now, if a student in the back of the room asks a question, and, and that's something that you want to keep as part of your video, you might want to repeat that. Correct. Yeah, usually the kids right up here, number one, those are the good ones because they get to sit wherever they want. These are the ones that are asking the quality questions. The ones that are asking the quality questions or the questions back there usually get cut out. Okay? <laughs> because they're asking the question that these kids just asked five minutes ago. All right, so those get cut out. And that's nice because, again, and we all have different levels of students in our class. Some are like, oh, my God, I, I've never heard of this before. And others are like, really, again? Okay, so that's the nice thing about the video. If they already know this, fast forward. Okay, I remember that. Fast forward. So it's there for them to review if they need to or to learn if they need to. So this is a great tool that we don't need to be sitting in class and worrying about, oh, we could be doing stuff. We could be doing stuff for evaluation, labs, whatever things that you do in class to help them get to the goal that you want. Um, and there's a variety of ways that you can interface with the video. You know, you've seen up here, you know, you see Matt's face, you see Matt's body, he's pointing to things on the board. You know, if, if you're maybe working, especially a math problem or science problem, you could use a digital projector. I know we've got the Yumbos here, we've got a few Samsungs, is that what they are in the library that can be checked out? And I think in any classroom, uh, whether it's ALC or high school, those can be attached to the, the, the projector through the wall. So you could be writing underneath the camera while it's being filmed up there. Now they don't see your body, but they can see uh, you know, your text and your voice and the other videos that way as well. It, here's another thing, too. You know you're going to be absent. Some, some of us are going to take personal days. Some of us might be have a sick child at home. This is great because what I did last night, I came in, made this video. You can make instructions for the sub. Okay? You, that way there's no misinterpretation of what you want the kids to do. You can make a short little five minute video, put it on a jump drive, have the sub or leave it in the computer for the sub to just play. Okay? So there are times when you need to do certain things and you want specific instructions given to the students, great idea. Okay? Um, and then on something like this, even though I've got, this is like a 14 minute video showing how to do a problem, a conversion problem. You can edit out certain things, like if I'm going to erase the board after I have all the stuff up there, I even say to the to the video. And even while I'm, if I make a mistake while I'm lecturing to the kids, I'll say, I'm going to edit this. Because when I edit at home, it only takes as long as it, as long as the video is. In other words, I'll put one earbud in, I'll sit on my, sit with the laptop in front of me, watch TV, talk to the kids, talk to the wife, and when I hear something weird, it's like, oh, Focus in, edit that out. Okay, so you're already doing this in class. Just record it and edit it at home, or during your prep, if you have prep that day. Yeah, and Matt, Matt does so much more editing than, than I do. I mean, I think part of it is just the nature of the beast. I mean, I, I'm doing this mostly for lectures, and I've been finding it's great for those really complicated homework problems. And this is selfish, but you know, sometimes you explain this. Young come around next year and you got to do it all over again. It's nice if you've got a really good quality expl explanation. It's something that the kids can seek out on their own and, and you've got like, time saving class. But my editing is just, it's, it's much less sophisticated. But whether you edit wholeheartedly or very little at all, it's, it's very easy to do through the, the movie maker. I'm not sure. And on something like this, I made this demo last night. I had two cameras up going. And this just shows how I go back and forth in the video, and that, again, that's just an editing feature. You don't need two cameras. You only need one, but at least it shows the transition, the fade, and all that, all the neat stuff that really kids, that really kids like to see. <coughs> all right, this is an example of a multi-view shot, and what we can do with these multi-view shots is we can edit these so that we can get one of the best views. Maybe one view doesn't work out really well, but the other camera on here is I've got two round bottom flasks that are heated up and I've got some water with some food coloring in there. And we're gonna do a pretty cool demo here.
This is a, a gas property or a nice little demo to help demonstrate what happens when you take a very hot gas and I don't know if you can see um, the steam that's coming off of here. Try to get a dark background here. I don't know if you can see the steam that's coming off from behind there, okay, from that camera or if you can see it from behind that camera. So there's a lot of steam coming out of these round bottom flasks and they're really hot, ready to go. If I had these without these openings here, these things would blow up because the pressure gets so great within. But what I'm going to do with this big one here so I don't accidentally knock it off, set it right there for just a moment. And we're going to focus on this small one. And what's nice is this is also going to give us some editing capabilities. We can discuss. You can look at the raw footage and then notice how I edit some of this information out. All right, so here, what I want to explain is we've got water. That's a liquid that's boiling. In other words, it's changing from a liquid to a gas. As it changes to a gas, that gas is being heated in, inside of the round bottom flask as well. As it's being heated, it's building up pressure, a lot of pressure. I mean, it, it's pushing quite a bit. I don't know if I can get a piece of paper to kind of demonstrate. Yeah. So it, I'm not going to put my hand on it, but it makes a nice little hissing sound as it's coming out. Okay, so we never want to put our hand over that because steam is warmer than boiling water. So that temperature is above the boiling point. So it's hot. Also, what that means is there's a lot of gases that are inside these round bottom flask containers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to cool this gas down quickly. As I cool it down, you're going to see something pretty cool take place. Now what I've got in the the beaker here to my left is some more water with some food coloring and I put food coloring in there mainly so that you could see what's happening. So I'm going to cool this gas as the gas gets cooled something very very cool is going to take place. I'm going to try to keep my hand out of the way so you can see what's happening here. I'm going to apologize in advance for the noise that it's right, about to go. make. Alright so now what's happening is the gas is starting to cool. As a gas cools, it becomes compressed. As it's compressing, it starts to compress the other gases that are inside of the container. So it rapidly pulls the water in, causing a vacuum. And it's going to actually compress that gas so much that it's going to fill this container completely up with water. Here we go. All right, so now what's happening is the gas is starting to cool. As a gas cools, it becomes compressed. As it's compressing, it starts to compress the other gases that are inside of the container. So it rapidly pulls the water in, causing a vacuum. And it's going to actually compress that gas so much that it's going to fill this container completely up with water. Now, if you've ever had a chemistry class, this is actually a pressure, I'm sorry, a temperature and a volume relationship. The bubble that's on top here, I don't know if you can see that bubble that's on top. That was the, that's the final volume of this gas. A lot of stuff that you could do and then post it and not have to do it again. Guys, questions, please be asked. I know you're thinking about a thousand things here. Yes, Stephanie. Um, I have never used Movie Maker before. Is it pretty easy it's to very, edit? I mean, so I don't need you to train me. It's something that I could just go on. Here, let me show you. Now, the version that I have, unfortunately is a little bit newer than the ones on there, but same purpose here. Um, the one that you've got is that even easier to use than what he's going to show you. Okay. I don't think that this is particularly complicated. Tony, go ahead and talk about this. You use this one a lot more. It's really just a matter of, of clicking import, you find the video you want, it takes, you know, it's a pretty short time, 5 to 15 seconds depending on its length for it to be sort of recognize. Right. And then what I typically do then is I'll go immediately I'll go to uh, I'll go to a uh, make title or credit. It's always nice at the very beginning to kind of explain what the video is about and you choose your colors, backgrounds and so forth. And then you just kind of drag that into this first little box. Back can you get on the storyboard is story? Yeah, storyboard. Um, this is the timeline. Okay. Storyboard is right here. I'll put the, 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 the opening credit there. And then for the simple videos where you don't do a whole lot of editing, you just drag the video that shows up here that you imported into there, and that's all you really need. It's ready to go. A kid, you can save it, and a kid can watch it. 
Now you can add special things in these boxes like transitions, like the dissolves and things like that. It's just kind of icing on the cake. Okay. But if, if you don't have any editing to do, you're in this program for maybe 30 seconds. Yeah, it is. It's, it's ready to. It's very user friendly. It's very user friendly. I just don't have that version on my computer. But here, if I drop this in, it's the same idea. Here's this. Here's the timeline. So as as the video is going on, okay, you can either fast forward, get to the point. So like right here, I'm just now starting. So. As the movie's progressing on, I can say, okay, I want to make an edit at this point right now. So all I have to do is pause it, split it, okay? When you make a split, now you can make changes. So if I want to put in, a, say, like a transition, oh, I don't know, that looks goofy, let's put that in. Okay, so there's a the transition. Back it up. When you play it and it gets to that, it'll do that transition for you. So that's where you would normally do an edit. Also, what say like that section, whatever just happened in that last couple seconds, I don't want it in there. Click, split it again, split it again, split it again, and then get over it and remove it. Now it's out. In between your two splits, that's your deleted portion. Correct. And then you can add a transition in there again, just to make it look seamless. So then you just, as it gets to that point, it just kind of fades in. Okay. okay. And usually when I have a transition where it's like, okay, I just finished the problem. It's going to take me about 30 seconds to erase the board. They don't need to see me over here erasing and carrying on, okay? <laughs> the show's for a lot. you gotta be, you got to be here to see the show. But the thing is, we can edit so much stuff out, all right? Can, can you show us that again? Yeah. The split. That's a, again, you got to be paying attention. <laughs> Watch your video. Oh, I'm sorry. Question? Did you show us that again? Oh, no. <laughs> Added a little piece. Uh, also, if you want to add, say, another video in, I mean, you can do a lot with movie maker. Let's see, I know I've got some others here. Like, pop that in. So if I had something else that I wanted to add into that, you just add another video to the thing, drop it in, boom, now we're ready to go. So, I mean, it's pretty clean. So there's something totally different. Movie makers, nice and simple. Have you ever tried um, doing this for a sub? So you've done your lecture, but you're not going to be able to be here. Yep. And then all you would have your sub do is go to YouTube and play? Yeah, I don't even trust YouTube. I just leave it on the jump drive. Okay. And I'll leave it in the computer on the USB, and I'll tell the sub, log into the computer, whatever the sub login is, and find that jump drive, play. Then, as a backup, if that doesn't work, then I leave the YouTube address. Okay. And then, if I also put on another, if you don't know what this means, ask a, scoot, a student, they'll type it in for you. Okay. I, I'm covering my bases, so I've got three avenues there. The jump drive, YouTube, and a student. Has Usually the students find it real quick. Because <laughs> they're the using sub, it. Has the sub said it's worked great? Oh, yeah. And yeah, because there's been times where I had to be at my son's surgery or right. something else. Uh -huh. I just, all I do is I, I've already made the video and it took maybe 30 minutes to edit it. Now it's ready to go. Could gotcha. you drop this on DVD and just leave the disc lay here? I, I guess you could. You could. Yeah. But I don't want to waste a DVD. <laughs> Can you use this for your AP courses? I am um, using it for AP. Okay. Oh, yeah. Have you done the reversal yet? Or Not yet. That's going to be you? next year. Right now I'm building the videos. Okay. But over the summer, I presented, did I say this? I've already yes. presented like 30 days of material. So they and come in and they, you have expectations that they watch them? The first day we had a test that was worth 150 points okay. right off the bat. So next year, your expectation of them watching it. This is like me in my reading assignments. I have a daily cliff noted version of their reading assignment. Yep. It's expected. Absolutely. Um, prior, it, it comes like you. It's reversal. This is what we're going to be learning in the next yes. day. I know they're not reading it. There and are some. There are expectations that we need to have for the AP students. And I, again, not necessarily with the regular classes, but AP students, when they get into college, if they miss a day in class, that professor is not going to say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a special lecture for you. It's there. It's available. Or you so go to some friend and find the notes. So the, when they come in that day, you will basically just be working problems. Yep. Um, 
answering questions. And I can tell if a student hasn't watched the video yet based on the type of questions they're asking. And I'll point blank and say, have you watched this video yet? Don't ask me any questions until you've watched the video. And then you've got to have that expectation. And for the summer, I mean, I had a couple kids come in and say, I didn't, I didn't do any of the summer work. I go, guidance office is that way. Because in AP, we've got to have that done right now. So, I mean, it, it's for AP, and again, this is only for AP, you've got to have that expectation. And I think most of them did. Most of them did. There were a couple of them, like, yeah, I watched a couple of the videos. Watch what you need to, because again, most of that material was reviewed. So, so your, your videos will probably be uh, 20 to 40 minutes. So their homework will be that 40 minutes. And any other questions that they think of. And next year, what I'm also planning on doing with the video, and I didn't mention this in the first uh, presentation, a blog feature. So while they're watching it, they could have some blogging going on there. That way, we could also have other students answer those questions. And I can pipe in whenever, before I go to bed and go, okay, looks like everybody's got it under control. Tony's answering the questions for Melinda and all this. We're good. We'll answer any other questions in the morning. In other words, I want, there has to be an expectation that some of the materials have got to be taken care of outside of class. So when we come in here, we can take care of business. Because some kids, they understand the material and they're, they're bored to death. Other kids are like, oh my God, and that's what the video is for. One way that you could check to make sure they've looked at the video is if there is an accompanying note sheet that goes with it, that they would be expected to bring that in. And it. Yeah, there's, there's just so much we can do now. The technology is available. And with, you know, with Dr. Bennett's uh, dream of every high school student taking at least one online course during their high school career, it's nice as teachers to be able to have the skill that you could present something that's very um, yeah. online based and it's out of the house. Yes. Yeah. I give a lot of demonstrations in jewelry because the kids have to get so close. How close can I get to the subject matter with that camera before it becomes out of focus? It's like your eye. When in cross country, I have the students when they're right before the runners are coming, they take their watch and they go in and out. So mm -hmm. it's just like my eye. So this is way too close. Mm -hmm. Right there is perfect. What's the distance of that? Twelve inches. Twelve to eighteen. Yeah. You can so see. Twelve to eighteen inches. There's not a real quick blur. You know, saying well, that's wait. very. Can you see? Okay, go twelve inches. So. So I'm saying, but is however, it Raymond, it does have a zoom in feature. Oh, it does. Yeah. So you can, yeah. even though your material might be 12 inches away, you can zoom <laughs> in. Yeah. And that's also another thing. And I, and again, having two presentations, I, I can't remember everything that I said. Did I say that you could set up, talk about signing up the lab and making a video for that? So there, there's there's some setup things you can do, and that's an excellent example where you can show the students how to do it so that when they come in. Did you watch the video? If you haven't watched the video, get yourself one. We don't have any time here. Now will the zoom in adjust itself according to the demonstration? Yes. Okay. It's got a good lens. I, you know, we don't have a Kodak or anything. Like I said, we just stumbled upon the camera. It was Walmart. It had a special. You could also get a free four gig, free four gig card. And it was just like a yeah, I was, I was personally looking for another way that once school started, because with community clips with the ALC, that's nice. But you guys don't all have community clips, which is where you get to write on the tablet and work out problems and talk it through. And I was thinking, I've got to be able to manage my time a lot more efficiently. I'm already lecturing. I'm already making, presenting this material numerous times to students so I can have good bits and pieces that I can fuse together and make it into one lecture. So... I d and it just, it saves so much time. Now, if a student has the need where, say, they can email me that night and say, I need an example of a problem, then I can do that on Community Clips. Or, if I'm already still here at school, I can make a real quick video and shoot it out. Yeah, I mean, students, you know, when they create their own little YouTube account, they can sort of smorgasbord, they can choose, you know, the videos that they favorite. Um, Design of it. The bad thing about YouTube is I don't think it's got a really good organizational infrastructure. It's not like a change. 
you know, it's pretty much video, 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 video. But, um, you know, students can find ways of organizing these and, and retrieve them, not just like, one time, but go back and see them multiple times if you for a test or whatever. And, and that's one reason why it would be nice if you had on your school fusion or whatever web page, whatever you use as your organization, you be responsible for that organization. If it means days on a calendar or the lecture numbers, I mean, all mine are day numbers. So that if when they, at the end of the semester or the end of the year, they get an index of the material that we talked about, it's on this day. So they can go back to the calendar and go, oh, there's day 54. Boom, watch the lecture, get a real quick review. Boom, we're ready to go for the final exam or AP exam, whatever it is. Um, so you can take you can take a whole second video and put it into your editing timeline, yeah. and then cut pieces out of the second video and paste them back into the first one. It's one. Get rid of the second one. So it's yep. a normal cut and paste. Absolutely. Okay. And the second question: Do the tripods fit any cell phone, iPhone, camera? Mine, it doesn't. My cell phone, that, that was one reason I was like, I actually, the first time I made the video, it was real wobbly, and then I start taking my stools and books, and I was like, man, this isn't going to work when the kids get in the building. So that's when I went online and found these cameras, but... And they come with a tripod? No, that was like $14. Oh. I mean, they're not high tech, and it, it extends to four or five feet. But it depends on which one. You're yeah, buying. that's true. You got them. I bought one. I thought I was buying the same one Matt did, and mine's mine will go up to like six feet. Kind of old one of Greg's cameras. <laughs> Bob had Bob had a really good suggestion. Yeah. Like the tell him. <laughs> Break for lunch uh, now. Guys, you're here to give others ideas. This isn't Tony and I speaking. Please, don't do that. Go ahead, Bob. One of those uh, things you mount on your dash to hold your GPS that's variable, it'll hold any model of GPS, there you just go. a claw, you get that on there. It'll hold your camera, your cell phone, whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of neat things that you can do with this, and I think if you're not at least documenting this, I think you're doing yourself a disservice, especially with the technology that's available. It just, it's so much, so much easier now, because if I'm not going to be at school the next day, I'm already at the lecture. <coughs> I, it's just, the kids don't need to be sitting not doing anything. We do have um, uh, tripods with the flip video cameras in the, in the library. They're not something that I can give to people like for a year, because they only have five of them. But <laughs> Um, if you want to try it out to see what works for you, you definitely have that available. Yeah, and, I, and this whole presentation wasn't for you to go and bombard Robin about technology and whatnot, but I know she's got a lot of stuff. I know she has a lot of material available, and these things are, the technology is getting cheaper and cheaper, and the quality is going higher and higher, which is really nice. Matt, too, a lot of people have um, uh, just your digital camera at home, will take my digital camera and take HD quality video on my on my card and it's a fabulous way to do it too. Yeah. So you just have your regular digital camera, all all of us have that and then almost all of those do video. Yeah, I it's you guys might discover some devices that work very inexpensively that we never thought of. That's what's great about you know more people who do this become you know, experts in their own right. And it's still, you know, as scary as this might be, oh my goodness, you know, it's still the teacher. It's still the teacher responsible for this. It's not like, a, a, oh my gosh, we're going to be replaced. It's still like, we have to develop these. Yeah, and the whole point is, even though other students that are not in my classroom are watching this, they don't have access to me. So if a certain student of mine says, well, what did you mean at minute five in the video? They get to ask me or they get to email me. In Bakersfield, California, you know, you don't get to ask because I've I've disabled the comments. You don't get to make a comment, and I don't. There's no way for them to find out who I am from these things. So, huh. it's well, not aware. That Avon sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's many Avons. <laughs> in addition to not showing student faces, oh yeah, yeah, probably don't want to uh, give out last names. You know, I think the first name. <laughs> How do you dress up for 
address the kids to say they don't have regular access? In this day and age, it's really difficult, but on the bottom of my syllabus, I put the library hours for Avon and Plainfield. For Saturday and Sunday. Plainfield's open on Sunday, Avon is not. But I put the library hours on there. And then kids use that as an excuse. I go, library's always open. Check your syllabus. It's on the bottom. We have a ton of kids who come in to the library after during school. lunch, after school, before school. And yep. The bad news is YouTube they can't see. Yes. See. But most of them have their cell phones, iPods, iTouches. That, that's one reason why I went with YouTube because they can see it anywhere as long as they have a device. With Fusion, my kids that had Macs could not see these videos. They could not see them. So, and I had some students that I was starting to post, starting to experiment with the videos earlier last year, or later in, right before the AP exam. And they're saying, I can't see it. And is that because WMT? Probably. Yeah, and where, I mean, is there some universal, it's almost like a PDF. Yeah. Yes. You know, That's what YouTube like does. Video PDF. Yeah, yeah, a video PDF. And we have uh, access, do the kids have access to teacher tube, or would that be something you could uh, Well, you know, know. we thought about that, and uh, teacher tube's growing and mm -hmm. growing. Yeah. I mean, there would be a, a time when we look at this and think, you know, well, we could probably just move all of these to teacher tube if, right. if that doesn't. I didn't even know about Teacher Tube. Right. <laughs> teacher Tube is to YouTube as Edmodo is to Facebook. There's a whole new Facebook program that's devoted to education. Have you noticed any any other teachers out doing your exact same video type thing on YouTube? I don't care what other teachers are doing. Well, no. I, mean, I don't know. I don't. I really don't. What I think is why do we read the video? Yeah. The video you want to do might already be out there. Yeah. No. Here's why. And, and this goes off. And I'm not going to not the Khan Academy, because I know somebody's presenting today, but I looked at the Khan Academy. I have material that I need to present. And I don't want some other student watching Tony's lecture, who's in Brownsburg presenting AP chemistry stuff, to say, well, well, what did Mr. Record mean by this? If they have a question about what I said, they get to ask me. I don't want to have to put it on somebody else's shoulders and have to try to explain maybe something that's correct or incorrect that we that's not important or relevant. Now, if they want to watch it, that's fine. But the thing is, I'm responsible for that material. And I even say to the kids in class, if you see something that's wrong, you come to me because I did it. All the stuff that you get in this class is my bad, except when they get the review books. And then I say, hey, find the mistakes, bring them here, let's check it. That means you know what's going on. So even though I understand that you're saying about reinventing the wheel, YouTube's out there, it's yours. Everything's on your shoulders. Anything that you say is required in that classroom. I looked at that Khan Academy when I knew I was going to be absent for a day, and I couldn't find a video on there that I would have exactly. presented to a classroom. Right. right. You know, there, there are two of us from a math standpoint we'll talk about later that I think are superior, and I think it's just unfortunate. I just had a chance to talk to Kyle about this in the last session. But, uh, one was called Patrick Just Math Tutor at JMT. I think it's one of the better ones. And Think Well Corporation has an amazing one where uh, watching the video, you not only see the person's face, you see a PowerPoint running presentation, and the scripting in three panes. And it's really dynamic. It's, it's I don't know cool. that yet. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. You know, there's three cameras. So, so when the kids have their cell phone or iPod or whatever and download your uh, lecture, and they got their earphone in and they're listening to it while they're taking their test, can you get YouTube? And who's what if they convert it? But if they download it onto their MP3. local, right? Nobody has earphones in when they're taking a test. Yeah, yeah. Just and no cell phones. I mean, I don't, I don't like kids have reason. cell phones out yeah. for a calculator. If you don't have a calculator, bring your cell phone up. I've got calculators. Mm -hmm. Your phone goes in your bag. And in an AP class, I mean, they know that that's the expectation on the day of the exam. Right. It's easy, but I think any course, any more now, can make the argument. Well, I have students ask me all the time, can we listen to, a, to music while we're doing our, <laughs> while our other teachers let us? Like, no. So, Don't, yes. Yeah. Your rule is your classroom. Plain and simple. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you want your kids to listen to music, trust me, they can make a real quick cheat sheet. <laughs> I don't even let them use graphing calculators. I know Tony has calculators that has test mode. No. You're going to use a simple two line calculator. They have to acknowledge they can't be 
I guarantee in college, I'm not going to let you look into your laptop computer. computer. <laughs> I think you can go to just about anybody, to be honest. It, you can ask me questions, you can ask Tony questions. I think Robin would be able to answer them. I think even Kyle would be able to answer them. Because it seems a little overwhelming, like you would love to do this, but you've already missed so many lectures. You know, yeah. that you could have done, but you might have jump in and get started. I don't know. Hey, this is just information that's available doesn't mean that everybody needs to be doing this. I just started doing this, and I'm working my butt off this year. But next year, I get to work my butt off for something else. Okay, So I've got that in place. And it's just like the website. I did the website 10 years ago. It's already in place. That work's already done. I mean, it's little bits and pieces that you do to your curriculum, to the way you teach. Get it done. Make it permanent. And you would not have to be nearly as aggressive as Matt. I'm not. I, I maybe have 15% of my contact. So by the end of the year, Matt will be very close to 100%. Oh, I will be 100 yes. So, you know, and it's always a work in progress. Do you use for those things that are absent? Or do you use for the things that are absent? Or do you use for the If I'm absent, if they're absent, if they just need extra exposure. Okay. And I'm, I'm finding lately it's not just new material. Going through homework is, has been one of the Help sessions. If you host a help session, yeah. videotape it. Just don't show the kids. Let them hear the they questions. They can. They access it at home. They can do the homework. Right. I just record. Yeah, we need to do two of those first.